fish, there's a fish, there's a fish. Oh, I just spooked him. Oh, man. I spooked him so hard. That was a little bit better one, too. You see when I kicked it? Oh, he's back. He's back. Oh, he missed it. Well, it is that special time of year. It is first ice. I'm actually a little bit later than I normally push it. Normally, I'll try to be one of the first people on the ice, and th there's nothing wrong with that if you're taking the proper precautions, but I had so much going on in my life leading up to ice season that I, I, wasn't, I wasn't out. There's been people out on the ice for you know over a week, maybe two weeks already, um, and even f longer up north. But anyways, in this video, we're gonna go sight fishing for some backcountry brook trout, which is one of my favorite things to do. But first off, if you're new to this channel, welcome. Thank you for stopping by. Um, I know some people come specifically for ice fishing content because there isn't necessarily a ton of ice fishing content online. But my name is Jay Stevens. I live in Kenora, Ontario. Um, I love to fish for everything. I'm not, you know, just a walleye guy or just a bass guy or just a musky guy. I love doing everything everywhere and I want to bring you guys along. When I make a video, I kind of have a couple goals in mind. Kind of the, the three things. I want it to be entertaining. Maybe that's some, some humor, maybe, uh, you know, something, a unique concept. Secondly, is I want that escapism. Maybe bring you to a place that you've, you've just dreamt about going. That's the other part of it. You know, if you're having a tough day, it's something you can just watch the video and turn your brain off a little bit. Lastly is education. And the first two are great, but I think education is where I find the most value myself when I'm watching other YouTube videos and something I hope I can give you guys is value. Like, you know, not all of us had someone in our life that taught us how to fish, taught us how to hunt. Um, you know, not saying that everything I say is 100% is the best way to do it. This is just what I found useful and what's helped me along the way. So I try to share as much as I can. I, I really don't have secrets because I think everyone should enjoy fishing. Everyone should get out there. And uh, another thing I like to do is try to teach conservation, proper fish handling and that's other stuff. So that's my little ramble. We're gonna talk more about what I've been up to the last couple weeks, couple months. Um, but I'm gonna unload my gear. I'll show you what I'm wearing this season because that's a question I get. What type of gear I'm using, what suit, auger, all that stuff and we're gonna go fishing. This is my lunch for today. Hint of lime. These are unbelievable. The lime is everything. We are gonna be using the Eskimo 450 XD. This is a pop-up style. This is the plaid limited edition. It's, the, it's a smaller pop-up shack, but it's perfect when I'm safe fishing by myself. This is the Superior suit by Eskimo. It's a modular suit. It's got puffer pants, puffer jacket. Uh, I'm not gonna wear the puffer parts right now because it is going to be warm by the time I start walking. And these are floating. So that's such, that's one of the important parts that you don't need, but these days it's becoming so affordable is getting a floating suit. For how much we spend on electronics, augers and everything, a floating suit. Same thing with a life jacket, open water. It, it can save your life. Another question I get a lot, what type of boots? These are my favorite boots I've found so far. They're called Nats insulated boots. Super lightweight, really warm. This will go check some ice. I'm gonna grab my chisel, put my ice picks on, and we're just gonna go check right out from here. If I'm seeing like four or five inches, then we're gonna just rip and I'll check as we go. But I just wanna be cautious for these first couple steps. All right, let's see what we got. All right, this is a spud bar, basically just a big steel sharp piece on the end. Um, but yeah, this is something I'm checking. Some people will say, you know, it's gotta be good three swings. Some people say five swings. I mean, for myself personally, I want two to three swings in the exact same spot to make sure it's good. If it's going through in one to two swings, it's probably not worth it. A fish isn't worth it, right? So right now I'm hitting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, that's, I'm, I'm happy with that. But since it's early ice, I'm checking every couple steps. There's, there's no reason that the worst thing you can do is just obviously other people have fished here already is just to trust that, trust that it's good because there's footsteps there, but it could have warmed up, especially early in the season. It's been warm now the last couple days. So I'm going a couple steps and I'm checking. So three, four inches, I feel quite comfortable as long as I'm checking it. That's like six inches. So we are going to bring the sled down. We're going to go for a hike. I don't know how long the hike is. But uh, if you guys are looking to find stock trout lakes, this is in Manitoba or Northwest Ontario. Um, Manitoba is a really good stocking resource online. It shows when the lake was stocked, how many fish. Um, obviously there's the mastering of the book as well to see trophy sizes in Ontario. There's something called Fish Online. And yeah, it shows when fish are stocked. It shows some data on if they've been caught. People can report the catches, but that's how I find a lot of the new lakes. So the lake that I'm going to has been stocked with brookies for the last 10, 12, probably longer years. So I'm out of breath from chiseling. I don't know how the hike's gonna go. 
talk about packing life, but I still always take way too much stuff. That is the thing about filming your adventures. So far so good, lots of ice, but we're gonna check where it changes here. It goes from snow cover to not snow cover. That means it could have froze later, could be deeper water that held that temperature a little bit longer. So anytime you see any sort of change, check the ice. There's a sketchy looking spot there and the colors change a little bit here, so. Lots of ice. All right, well, I think we're at the portage. This is where it's gonna get very tough. I'm gonna take some clothing off because I'm gonna melt. If it was easy, everyone would be doing it, right? Okay, I'm gonna have to make a few trips. Oh, yeah, I'm not in good shape. This whole having a kid thing. Not that I was in shape before, but at least I got an excuse now. Well, we walked across the lake. I'm gonna check right here. I do also wanna pick a spot that favors getting more sunlight. If I pick a spot right now on whatever that is, the west side of the lake, it's gonna get shaded so much faster, I'm not gonna have good light for sight fishing. So I'm picking my sight fishing spot with that in mind. Here's a bit of weeds. How deep are we? Okay, so that's bottom. You can definitely go deeper than that. I think we're gonna set up just right along here and uh, it, it won't be too long since I don't have the heater, I can pop up and move around pretty quick, but we're gonna get the ice saw working. Basically, you don't need an ice saw for it. This ice saw makes it a lot easier. This is by a company called Nils. There's a couple brands that make some. It, it looks like some wild sort of weapon from some video game, but uh, it, it's really good for cutting sight fishing holes. Um, make sure you check your local regulations on making sight fishing holes, how big they can be. If you have to mark them a certain way, marking them after you're done fishing is very important, just for obvious safety reasons. Brookies have no problem, that's what we're fishing for today, stock brook trout. They have no problem pushing real shallow. Um, so yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna see what happens. We'll pop one hole here, I'll check with the camera, and if it's good, I'll cut the, cut the full hole. Yeah, that was right into rock. Now the good thing is to make sure you're not spedanding on the chunk of ice when you cut around it. Woo hoo hoo! All right, now my favorite part, we push the ice under the hole. I like to push it out to the deeper side. There we go, got it started. Now we're ready to fish, look at this. I think we'll actually get fishing today after all. Hopefully not too windy because I didn't bring the pegs. Hopefully not too windy because I didn't bring the pegs. All right, well I might have set up too shallow, but if a fish does come in, the visuals are gonna be amazing. We're gonna set up, we'll give this an hour. It is pretty quick now that we're out on the lake. So we're gonna set up, fish here for an hour, and we will move a little deeper. But if we see the fish, they're gonna be at our toes. Well, we are set up. A little shallower than I want to, but that's all right. Um, I forgot the pegs for the shack and we might lose everything right now because it started gusting out of nowhere. Always bring your pegs. We're using a new rod today. It is called the Feather Duster. It is a 34 ultralight. I think this is a pretty sweet stock trout rod. I've talked about the dipstick lots. I brought it along just for reference. The dipstick is one of my other favorite trout rods, the drench as well. But just, I think these rods are pretty comparable, but you see the dipstick, very, very fast tip. This one, a lot slower in action. So it's, it just helps keep fish pinned. Um, you know, maybe not as sensitive as this one, but it's more parabolic, meaning it bends, you know, a little more all the way through. So I think this is gonna be a sweet crappie rod, sweet trout rod. Um, we are gonna rig up some fluorocarbon. I'm using five pound braid. This is the new diesel reel. This wind might end my day if I'm not careful. This is what we're using. Classic gold dinner bell. I'm gonna close the window once I'm rigged up, but seven pound fluoro. I use a uni to uni. It's just fast. All right, lure number one is gonna be dropped in shortly. We're gonna do one active and one subtle, more neutral bait. 
be a little plastic. This is the smallest dinner bell. This is the non-tungsten version, which is nice in shallow situations where you want a little more flutter. Another odd reason an ice mite with a five mil tungsten. All right, we're all set up in the 450. Got the camera filming down the hole. And we're jigging, looking for brook trout. Don't even need a heater, it's so warm. Got lots of room. Oh, I got one! Oh, oh, oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Oh, oh, oh man, that was unbelievable. He's back, look at this. Look at this, he's back. He's staring at it, come on, come on. It's a decent fish. Got him. <laughs> yes! Oh, first fish of the ice season. Wow, that's a that's a nice brookie. I'm just gonna turn this camera a little bit. All right, guys, first fish of the 2022, 20, 2023 season. Beautiful brookie. Woo -hoo. That did not take long. This that is a good sign. Back into the sight fishing hole. <laughs> Man, that happened so fast. All right, this is what did it. You can't go wrong with a little gold spoon, the little gold micro dinner bell. Wow, I just love sight fishing. The thing about sight fishing is you can be catching not huge fish. That, that was a nice brookie. I've definitely caught a lot smaller brookies. The thing is, you're seeing the fish eat at your feet. I, it doesn't need to be a massive fish to be exciting. This is the most interactive form of fishing. And I get, as you, as you heard, I get giddy every time. It does not get old. So basically what I got with the one-two punch here, I got the micro dinner bell and the tungsten with the plastic is, you know, if the fish are aggressive like that one, he's going to come in and just chow the dinner bell, but he might come in, be interested in the dinner bell and just eat the plastic. So there's days where everyone comes in and kills the dinner bell, which is obviously what I prefer. And then there's days where they just want the plastic or they want some bait, some trout dough or something, right? So every day is a little different. I dangled my line. There we go, we're out. That was almost a disaster. Oh, there's a fish. He missed it. I got him. <laughs> I was filming it with my phone. Oh man, this is amazing. He, uh, this fish wanted to get caught. That is for sure. There she goes. Back to the rock. All right, that was amazing. Number two, I consider the success. New Lake, I know they're not big fish, but like sight fishing, first spot I picked. I mean, I, I got lucky, I guess, or maybe the fish aren't that tough to catch in this lake, but that is what trout number two came on. If it focuses, there you go, on the little plastic, but he, he just wanted to get caught as you saw by him swinging around. So right now I'm filming a little Instagram takeover for the uh, Eskimo Instagram page. And I was just filming my jigs going up and down and sure enough, that's when a brookie came down. So, oh, I love sight fishing. Like, you know how tournaments, make you know medium fish exciting fish that might not normally get you excited the tournament will get you excited for those same fish that's how i feel about sight fishing it's like if i caught that same fish on my live scope i'd be like okay well that's cool but to catch it sight fishing man i can't wait to take hand in sight fishing and that's one of the things i wanted to make this video a little bit of an update video too obviously first ice video of the year sight fishing a couple things that get me real excited but yeah, I just want to get you guys up to speed. Some of the videos you see on my channel might be from, you know, almost maybe a year, but half a year ago. So typically what I do is I'll, you know, by the time March, April rolls around, I'll be filming ice videos that drop this winter just because people are excited about ice. There's not ice everywhere. So I, I feel like it's better to, you know, hold on to some of those ice videos at the end of the season. So right now, if you guys haven't been following, there's a series called Game of Inches. It's competition amongst a bunch of YouTube channels. Um, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's just a good, it's just a good community building event. It's a lot of fun that's been dropping. I don't know what episode we'll be at by the time this video drops. Um, obviously Hannon has been taking up a lot of time. It's been, it's been wild. Kids are, I, I had no idea until I had one. It is the greatest joy and also just like 
there's days where it's like, how am I going to do this? And um, we're doing it. I mean, Sam is definitely doing most of it, um, especially now as he's younger. I'm excited when he's a little older and I'll be able to take him on a little more adventures, but we're, we're liking every step of it. Um, so Hannon's doing well. I will take him ice fishing at this winter, that's for sure. Been busy with Catch and Cook. If you're not familiar, Catch and Cook is the fish batter company my buddy Josh and I started. So it's it's like two years, two and a half years maybe we've been doing it. And a big thing we wanted to do was to sell in retail stores in the United States. Right now we sell in retail in Canada and we sell online in Canada and the States. But we don't sell in any, there's there's a couple brick and mortar stores in the States that have gotten some some samples. But we, um, we're, we're going to go hard hopefully this spring. That's what we've been working on behind the scenes and launching it in the States. There's just some different protocols we've got to go through and registers in American business and all that stuff. So working on that. Man, and then just the crossover season between closing up Uncle Mark's outpost. I'm a couple of videos behind on that. That's a cabin that Spencer and Scott and myself have uh, been building on Lake of the Woods. Um, thanks to Uncle Mark, who's been running the ship there. Um, they just pulled out like last week. So they were still boating across Lake of the Woods. And we got so close. We're probably 95% done. I'm a couple of videos behind on the updates. But um, June 1st is when bookings you're going to be able to start booking it as of June 1st in week-long increments. Um, there'll be more update videos about that, but just exciting things, but also just like wanting to make sure that I don't burn myself out at this time of year as I'm transitioning from, you know, putting the boat away, wanting to spend more time with Hannon, and then getting into ice season. I always know ice season is, a, is a, my busiest season of the year. So it's been good. I was at the Winnipeg Ice Fishing Show a couple of weeks ago. I, I got to say just massive thanks to everyone that came and said hi and took a picture and said they watched the videos. Like, it's pretty cool. When I upload a video, I don't always get that same connection. I do appreciate every comment, every like, share, all of that stuff. I, I do feel connected with you guys there. But there's definitely something about actually meeting you guys face to face. Um, and it's it's humbling. It's, it's wild because I just, I put the video online and I'm like, you know, I, I put it online partially for myself. But the fact that you guys want to watch it and it's now turned into a career for me is yeah I, I could get emotional if I talked about it too much but uh, I'm I'm living my dream and uh, right now I'm living my dream on a frozen lake sight fishing brookies with you guys so it's going to be a good winter we got a couple more videos banked from last winter they're going to get dropped yet but then it's going to be some current content and in December there'll be a new season of Canadian Angle which is a series of mine on the Mediator YouTube channel we got an ice fishing season and some some pretty sweet episodes i'm very excited about them so stay tuned for that but that's enough talking back to the fishing So it's pretty cool. You often can see the different size classes when it comes to stocking. So as I was saying, they've been stocking this lake for, I don't know, like 10 years, maybe longer. That's as far as the stocking was showed. But, you know, a brook trout stocked in one of these lakes, I feel like could live, you know, maybe six, seven years. They could live up to 10, I would guess maybe, but I would guess like five to six is probably upper end. And um, that first one we caught was probably, you know, two years, three years old, I would guess. And that last one we caught could have been stocked maybe a year ago depending on what time they stocked it at so i mean typically the smaller ones are going to be a little bit dumber easier to catch um but yeah those big fish are big for a reason they don't get caught and the thing about these lakes too is you know they get stocked for people to keep fish so i mean i'm all about catch and release all that stuff but these fish are stocked to be to be you know to be kept to also you know just enjoy catching them but also if you want to eat some fish there's no problem keeping a trout or two Oh, man, once again, asleep at the switch. Number three, I know they're small, but they are such cool looking fish. Just beautiful. There you go, buddy, thank you. If I was a little more prepared, I'd have a net along, especially if I was targeting, targeting, especially if I think there's bigger fish, I would definitely, I mean, having a net's just easy. You can keep the fish in the water and stuff. But. Oh, there's one. What the heck? Look at this. That fish is right under the surface. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, 
Is that the one I just caught? Is that a different fish? What was going on there? So right now, you know, I am shallow and I said that I do like to favor shallow um, for the obvious filming reasons, but you want to be on some sort of transition or some sort of line. This is something I learned from Aaron Weeb when we did some stock trout videos, just being on that transition. It might be weed to mud. Oh, jeez. That went into the ceiling. Oh, no, no, don't eat that one. Don't, okay, you can eat it. Oh, you missed it. Look at this. Look how aggressive this fish is. Look at this. Oh, oh I lost him. Come on, come back. Come back. Look at this. I'm gonna see if he can come out of the water. Oh. Oh, come on. Come on, come back. Come back. <laughs> I missed him again. I talk about it sometimes, there's like a limit in walleye fishing with how high you can pull that fish off the bottom sometimes. They have that safe zone. Well, I think when a trout's mouth is almost level with the ice, I think that might be his cutoff or his safe zone. But I was obviously just messing with that fish. He was a little guy, but man, so cool. Like just watching them come in and hunt and dart back and forth and swipes at one lure, swipes at the other. We'll probably catch that fish again yet. All right, the dinner bell's been amazing, but I'm gonna try a little rattle bait. There's one. Oh, he just crushed the tantrum. He just crushed it. Fish, there's a fish, there's a fish. Oh, I just spooked him. Oh, man. I spooked him so hard. That was a little bit better one, too. You see when I kicked that? Oh, he's back. He's back. Oh, he missed it. Oh, come on. Oh, oh man. That fish is so aggressive. Oh, man. We got him. <laughs> oh, I love this. All right, we're just gonna put that guy right back. That one's long and lean. Got him. Ooh, that's a pretty one. Like those dots. Those dots are everything. The white on the fins. Such cool looking fish. The fishing is picking up, it seems. You guys are sight fishing or spearing a good tip is to block out all the light it helps you see into the water a little better so i mean you could even go as far as taping some of those seams but also packing snow i didn't do a good job of it today because there is no snow on the ice but packing snow around the seam definitely helps but at least now closing the windows i'm in like two three feet of water as you can see it's really no problem seeing my bait seeing the bottom seeing that fish again <laughs> all right another little trout going back What a day. It's good. They're small, but yeah, this would be a great lake to bring a kid. That's for sure. We're gonna set this camera down just for a second here. Question is, what did we lose down the sight fishing hole? That could have been much worse, I think. Okay, I'm gonna leave the shack here. Okay, my Yeti's in the sight hole. All my camera gear is good. That's why you peg down your shack. But, first trip of the year, and I forgot the pegs. Well, I'm not surprised that happened because I felt the sides pop in a couple times. That's why you gotta strap it down. But the wind's really picking up. You only make that mistake once. You know what the prop, stay. The problem is, as I take all the spikes together and straps, and I just have them in a bucket, I just grab them, whatever I need, so I don't have them in each shack. But uh, we're gonna fish for a little bit longer. We're kind of losing our light. We are getting close to sunset, but we're losing our light because the cloud cover, it's getting windy, so we gotta see what we need to fish out of the hole first. <laughs> all right, I can see my water bottle standing upright in the water. 
Uh, I'm gonna leave this camera outside. I'm gonna fish for like five, 10 more minutes in here and I think we're gonna call it. It's a uh, huge success, huge success that my camera didn't smash on the ice and I didn't lose anything else down the hole, but we'll see if we can fish this water bottle out. Okay, we're done after this water bottle. If we can catch it, probably reach out and grab it. Okay, we got it. That was surprisingly easy. <laughs> Stay on. Stay on. <laughs> All right. We're gonna call that a success. We're not gonna push our luck any further. Well, wrapping this video up, uh, a lot of fun for my first time at this new lake. It was a bit of work to get in here, um, but we fished three hours, three and a half hours. That was pretty good action. So the rod I was using was that new one I was talking about by Frostbite called the Feather Duster 34 Ultralight. Did great with these fish. Obviously there wasn't much of a fight. Um, my one-two punch was an active bait and a, you know, a subtle neutral bait um, for the active bait. The one I used was the Dinner Bell uh, this was, this is the tungsten version. I use the non-tungsten version in gold. It falls a little slower. Tungsten is, you know, heavier for the same size. So, um, nice for deeper water. But in a situation like this, I like the, the OG, the, the basic dinner bell. The other one that did good as well was the old tantrum, the micro size, um, five pound braid on both of these. This is the thousand diesel reel. Uh, and then there's the two styles. So these are the two lineups of rods. I get questions about, you know, what's what. One is the Twilight, one is the Vanta Black. The Vanta Black, you suction the reel on, you tape it on and you use these, they're called handle huggers. It's like a cool shrink tubing that goes around it. So these rods have recoil guides. That's, that's the biggest difference. I don't know if this is showing nicely, but you can, you can bend the guides flat. You can bend the guide all the way down. That Those are expensive, that makes it good. You can step on this and it's not gonna break the eyelet off. As well, you know, some people like the feel of, of taping their reels on. It might feel a little more streamlined. It's kind of personal preference. And then on the Twilight series, this is the, you know, the more budget friendly version. You can take the reels on and off, which, you know, if you have limited reels, that it would probably make more sense. Either of these is a fine option. If you have enough reels and you want, you know, the best, then I'd go, Vanta Black, but the Twilight is awesome. I, I use the Twilight, you know, a good portion of the time. And then this is this was our subtle presentation, the, the little plastic on the tungsten. And that did good as well. When I missed them on the aggressive bait, then they hit the other one. But yeah, guys, uh, that's pretty much it. I hope you guys have an awesome ice season. It's it's gonna be a great one. I got some, some sweet trips planned and I appreciate all of you guys for following along. If you're looking for a last minute Christmas gift idea, Catch and Cook has merch coming out. We got some gift bundles as well. Yeah, and when you buy Catch and Cook, it helps support this channel and Josh McFadden. All right, guys, stay safe on the ice. And uh, next time I'm gonna bring pegs for my shack. Oh, and mark your holes. Pick up your trash and mark your holes. A couple of those and we'll be good to go. <laughs>